In this video, we are going to learn how to use .env. .env is a library to inject environment variables from a file into your program, into your application. .env is a very used library with 9 million downloads and we are going to learn how to configure it and how to use it. So let's jump into our Node.js application. We have a very simple index.js uh, file and a package.json, which is blank. The first thing we are going to do is to install .env. So simply npm e.env. Once it is installed, we just need to create a .env file, .env. And in that environment file, we can uh, put our variables. So you would put something like secret, something that you don't want to publish on Git or GitLab or Bitbucket. Can be password for your database, that can be certain sensitive information. Here we are just going to put a simple variable called myVar. And we are going to give it a value, a variable from .env, right? So we have declared our variables and it's just key value stuff so we can put something else. Number will be 12, that's fine. We have two variables and we want to now use them in our program. So we have an index.js file. In order to use what's in the environment file, you just need to require .env, .env and then call the function config. So what will that do is that it will automatically load the .env file that it will find in the root directory. So if we are to execute file, execute the file, it will give us nothing. And that's because when it will run, it will inject all those variables into our, our environment variables. So you can get those in nodes with uh, process.env. So console log process.env and what's, what's the name of the variable? myVar, so dot myVar and let's execute that. And you see it works. We have the value that we stored into our uh, environment variable accessible in our application. Same thing for number. So that works. Now, most of the time, you will have several environments into your application. You have the default one, you might have a testing one, you might have a development one, staging, production. So by definition, this thing this function will just load the, the .env file. So if we want to load something like .env .development, based on the environment that we pass to the, to the Node.js, so we, I'm going to show you what it is. So let's just copy those values and put them into development. So .env .development. Okay, so now, now I want to be able to require either this one or this one depending of the node env that I pass to the Node.js program. So node env, you see we have development and if I pass development, I want to load this one. And if I, for instance, if I pass like production, I want to load dot end dot production that I, I'm not going to create here, but you understand the concept. And if I'm not doing anything, I want it to load the default one. So how am I going to do it? Um, not not end the development. So if I run it, so now it runs from dot end, but I want to run it from here. So the way to do it is to specify a path in the config file. So path, we're going to use their name. Actually, we're going to use um, the uh, ES6 uh, string interpolation. So their name and dot env dot process dot env dot not env. So basically, the suffix will change based on the environment. So let's also console log that. So we have more more view overview of what is happening. Let's console log that. So cool, it works. We imported the variable from the development, right? But what happens if we do something like that? What happens if we just run node index.js? Well, it will say undefined because it's it's actually trying to get the environment that is called undefined. And this is not what we want. So basically we want just to have a simple if else condition. So if process.env.notenv so basically, if not env exists, and not env is this thing that we pass before executing node, if not env exists, then we use that, and else we are not. We are just going to use require and dot env and config. So it will load the default env. 
So now, with that logic, we can create any environment we want, any um, file we want, and just load it like that. So again, it works. And if we want to use not env development, it will work as well. So sometimes it might happen that your the variables that you want to inject into your into your application will clash into existing variables. So in that case, you will want to refer to the documentation and use their code to actually manually overwrite the variables because they say that they will not modify any environment variables that have already been set. So you know pretty much everything that you need to know about .env. It's a very nice and easy to use library. As always, I hope that you like this tutorial. Feel free to share it, feel free to leave a like, um, and thank you for watching.